Welcome back. In this video, we'll add castling to our game. Castling is the only way to move two pieces in one turn. It involves a king and a rook. Both must be in their start position. For simplicity, I'm only showing those pieces here. There are two different types of castling. To castle kingside, move your king two positions to the right. This will also move the rook to the left of the king. For player black, kingside castling looks like this. You can also castle queenside if your left rook is in its starting position. Just move your king two positions to the left and the rook will automatically move to the right of it. Here's what queenside castling looks like for black. That's essentially it, but there are many rules for when castling is allowed. 1. The king may not have moved. Once you move your king, it can never castle, not even if you move it back to its start position later. 2. The rook you are castling with may not have moved either. Again, it doesn't matter if you move it back. 3. All squares between the king and rook must be empty. If there's another piece between them, you cannot castle. 4. You cannot castle out of check. If your king is currently in check, castling is not allowed. And 5. The king may not move through or into check. If the king has to move through or onto a square where it would be in check, then castling is also not allowed. We begin by creating a class for the castling move. This class will handle both kingside and queenside casting. I'll adjust the namespace and make it a subclass of move. Next, we'll add the three required properties. The move type, from position, and to position. The from and to position is for the king, not the rook. We'll also add three variables here. The direction that the king will move, and the rooks from and to position. Now we can add a constructor. It takes the move type, either castle kingside or castle queenside, and the king's position, which will always be its start position. In the body, we'll store the type, and we'll store the king's current position in from pose. To set the remaining variables, we must check if the type is kingside or queenside. If it's kingside, the king moves right or east. And it moves to column 6 in its current row.
the rook moves from column 7 in that row. And to column 5. If the type of the move is queenside castling, the king moves left or west. into column 2 in its current row. The rook moves from column 0 in that row. to column 3. Now we can implement the execute method. All it should do is move both the king and the rook. This can be achieved easily using two normal moves. To move the king, we create a new normal move with its from and to position. and execute it on the board. To move the rook, we do the same, except of course using the rook's from and to position. Great. We will create the casting moves from the king class. So let's open it now. Remember, one of the rules for castling is that the rook cannot have moved. So we start by adding a helper method called isOnMovedRook. As the name suggests, it returns true if there's an unmoved rook at the given position and false otherwise. First of all, if the given position is empty, we return false. Otherwise, we get the piece at that position. and return true if it's a rook and it has not moved. For our purposes, we don't have to check if it has the right color. In fact, we don't even have to check if the piece is a rook. We'll always call this method with the original position of a rook. So, if the position contains an unmoved piece, it must be a rook with the right color. Another condition for casting is that all squares between the king and rook are empty. So, let's add another method called all empty. It checks whether or not the given positions are empty, of course. We can do this using the all method. Okay, now we can check if kingside casting is allowed.
The from parameter is the king's current position or where it will move from. If the king has moved before, then castling is not allowed. Otherwise, we create the position where the rook must be. Remember that if we get here, the king has not moved. So the rook must be in the same row and at column 7 for king side castling. Next, we store the positions between the king and the rook. Again, they are in the same row at column 5 and column 6. Note that I've omitted the type here. The compiler can infer that they are positions if you are using a recent version of c -sharp. Otherwise, you must write position explicitly. Ok, now we can return true if there's an unmoved rook at rook pose. And all squares between the king and the rook are empty. We also need a can castle queenside method. It works the same way. If the king has moved, it's not allowed. The rook should be in column 0. And these three positions are between the rook and the king. Queenside casting is allowed if rook pose contains an unmoved rook and the between positions are empty. Now let's scroll down to get moves. Here we'll check if kingside castling is possible. If so, we yield return a castle move with the king side type. And the king's current position. And similarly for queen side castling. We are almost there, but there is one more thing we have to do. Remember how all moves have an isLegal method. The default implementation is in the moveBase class. This implementation returns true if the move does not leave the player's king in check. But that's not enough for casting moves. Casting is only allowed if the king is not currently in check and it doesn't move over or onto a position where it is in check. So in the castle class, 
we have to override this method. First, we get the moving player by checking the color of the king. If the player is already in check, the move is not legal. Otherwise, we have to check if the king would be in check in the two squares it will move through. To do that, we create a copy of the board. and store the king's current position in that copy. Next, we add a loop with two iterations, one for each step. Inside the loop, we move the king one step in its move direction on the board copy. and update its position. If the king is now in check here, we return false. If it's not in check, the second iteration of the loop will move it another step and test if it's in check there. If we get through all of that, then the castle move is legal. And we've done it. There were quite a few rules we had to implement, but the beauty is that we don't have to change anything in the UI project. Our castling moves should just work. Let's check it out. Here, White should be able to castle on either side. If I click on the white king, we see that I can indeed move it two squares left or right. I'll try king side casting. And it worked. In this state, black can castle on either side. This time, I'll try queen side castling. Perfect. Everything appears to work. But let's test the casting rules we covered in the beginning of this video. Here, the white king has moved, and so has the black rook on the left. I'll move both back to their original positions. White should now be unable to castle, and that is indeed the case. Black, on the other hand, should be able to castle kingside, but not queenside. Let's see. That works too. In this state, there is a piece between the king and the rook for both players. So neither should be able to castle. Here, the white king is in check by the black queen so castling is not allowed. Note that if it had been allowed, white could escape check by casting. Player black is also unable to castle here. That's because the black king would have to move through this square, where it would be in check by the white pawn. We have now successfully implemented castling moves. In the next part, we'll handle capturing on passant. See you then.